सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली इन टूडेज एपिसोड ऑफ कटक लेटर आई एम गोइ टेल यू स्टोरी दैट इज थ्रिलिंग एक्साइटिंग स्केरी intriguing and frightfully cluttered all at the same time so please fasten your seat belts it also sounds very cluttered because it deals with complex science the most complex aspects of biosciences which is virus technologies our focus is coronavirus sars cov2 or sars cov19 which is what the world is suffering suffering from and which now india is suffering for, from more than any other country in the world so the question is where did the virus come from so remember that song from three idiots i think that was a thing three theme song kahan se aaya tha wo kahan gaya usse dhoondo where did it come from go find where it is so second part there is no problem kahan gaya ise dhoondo because this virus now corona virus covid 19 is found everywhere in the world it takes nothing to find it but still 15 months into the pandemic nobody knows for sure where it came from so there is the innocence theory which is that nature did it god almighty when you are not sure blame god right whether god is of any use at any other time or not but when you have to find a scapegoat or a bad guy blame god so maybe nature did it nature does funny things all right that's what the second is that maybe it jumped out of a lab it jumped out of a lab as a part of some 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 security leakage in a genuine bona fide lab experiment and third of course is the extreme conspiracy theory that this was a bio weapon that the chinese were developing in their lab and they went, this went out of control now these three theories have been around for a long time these have been discussed debated but not adequately because the theory number 2 and 3 have been knocked down immediately as they've come up because a lot of the virologists around the world have got stood up to say no 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 if anything we should give credit to the chinese virologists and scientists who are so brave very brave who identified this first of all who broke its genome in record time shared it with who never mind the who took forever sharing their data with the world and even told us a week after they had got the genome uh, that uh, that uh, that that they thought this was not transmissible human to human but let's leave that aside the question right now is where did the virus come from now so far until about a couple of weeks ago it was still generally understood that while there were suspicions as to where it came from there was nothing there was no smoking gun there's a reason why i use that expression it will come to you uh, as we conclude this there was no smoking gun there was no fact so people applied the principle of ockham razor ockham razor principle which i once used in natural interest also is ockham is o w c a m that when everything else for any other possibility to happen you need too many variables then the most obvious possibility is most likely to have been a fact so the most obvious possibility in this case was that this was a zoonotic transmission this is something that jumped from one wild animal to another to human beings who either ate that animal or came in contact with it so the usual suspect because a lot of corona virus is come from bats and this corona virus seemed like it had some kind of an origin from a bat in china's yunnan province because china's yunnan province in many of the caves there a lot of large diversity of bats live so it was widely believed that it came from a bat went to another animal and from there it jumped to human beings and the initial theory was it jumped to human beings from the wuhan wet market why wuhan because that's where the first cases had come up so wuhan wet market sells all kinds of live animals a wet market is 
market that also sells live animals. So maybe it came out of there. It was left there. It just so happens that Wuhan also has China's foremost virology lab. Now, you may say correlation is not causation, right? Scientists love to say that. But then one of our great lyricists also wrote some, a long time back, Bina karan koi baat nahi hoti, although he said this in the context of dil se dil milne ka koi karan hoga, lekin bina karan koi baat nahi hoti, nothing happens without a reason. So, this Wuhan Institute of Virology is also located in the same city where this wet market was located. Now, what had happened was, I'm just giving you a little background and also, it will also help me keep the whole episode a bit crisper and also shorter than I might be attempting to make it. What had happened was that just as the first signs of this pandemic came out, in February itself, in February of 2020, and the first theories had come out that maybe this came out of the Wuhan viral, virology lab or this was a scientific experiment gone wrong or the Chinese were to blame about this. On February 19, 2020, a bunch of really eminent scientists, a bunch of really eminent scientists wrote a letter jointly in the Lancet. They wrote this letter in the Lancet saying that we stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. Now, this group of virologists also included a top virologist called Peter Daszak. Now, I will tell you about him in just a minute. Now, what has happened? Our cause for action, the reason we are talking about this today, that a very large article, a very long article has come out in publication called bulletin, the bulletin.org. The bulletin.org is a very prestigious publication of the super prestigious bulletin of atomic scientists. This article is also written by Nicholas Wade, who is the doyen of science journalism in the world. He used to be like the topmost, senior most science writer in the New York Times until 2012, he's nearly 80 years old. When he writes, people stand up and take notice and he doesn't write just like that. So in this long article, of which I'm sharing you a link, he has given many citations. It's like a scientific research paper, although he has not done any research in a lab. And he questions and he examines these theories and he debunks some and comes up with findings that are startling. So startling that many other people who were earlier skepti skept uh, uh, skeptical of the idea that this could have escaped from a lab are now changing their minds. So there is a letter by a bunch of scientists in one scientific publication. Please see that letter. This is in sciencemag.org. So science, it's a journal, very prestigious. So 18 scientists have written there that they think that the origins of where this virus came from should be now investigated dispassionately. Of course, they will go on to say that this, not lead, this should not lead to any anti-Asian racism, etc. And they appreciate the role played by brave Chinese scientists. But they, for the first time, say that the origin should be investigated. We should not just sit on our haunches and say this was a natural creation. This was a wrath of God, nature, whoever. These scientists, very importantly, also include a very interesting name called Dr. Ralph Barrick. Now, as we talk, I will you will figure out why that name is important, just as that name Peter Daszak, uh, who is a signatory to that letter to the Lancet on 19 February 2020, debunking all these suspicions and theory is also important. Because Nicholas Wade looks at all this. After Nicholas Wade's article, you will also see some other reactions. Zeynep Tufekci, who is one of the foremost scientific analysts, she is a person of science and writer. We talked about her article, long article in the New York Times a couple of weeks back, where she talked about the new theories on how coronavirus is spread by aerosols much more by touch or much more by any other way. So aerosols, aerosols, aerosols. So keep your windows open, ventilators open, use air filtration, keep the distance, etc. Uh, even indoors. So she has also tweeted now and she's put out a bunch of tweets which you will see 
where she is saying that look with this article now and these revelations time has now come to examine more closely and more critically where this virus came from did it escape from a lab although i must say she is still careful to say that she is not buying into a story that this is biological warfare gone wrong it's very tough for a scientist any scientist to say that unless you have evidence but a lab escape from a biosafety level bsl4 lab a dangerous virus like this is is a very embarrassing thing but the important thing is as we talk on nicholas wade's revelations you will understand that he is saying that this was probably a virus created in this lab and why do we create new deadly viruses so, so this is called a gain of function process that means you try and do something risky or dangerous with a calculated risk that there is risk but the gain of this function may be fantastic so let's do it for the gain so this lab was engineering new corona viruses why were they doing it they were doing it because they thought that by engineering new corona viruses they could get ahead of nature so tomorrow if like sars 1 another virus came corona virus came and attacked human beings they would have been ahead of it in designing vaccines and designing an answer to it that was the reasoning for gain of action it now turns out as nicholas wade says that that idea needs to be reexamined whether the gain of action was valid or not the second thing he says is and that's the reason we mentor mentioned peter dasack earlier he says that the one reason these ideas were not examined earlier the ideas of lag lab escape or even biological warfare although he doesn't say biological warfare even those ideas were not debated discussed was because two letters were written two statements statements were made by sizable scientists saying that this is rubbish so first was this letter on february 19 in the lancet by a bunch of scientists led by peter dasack now he says that remember this statement should have been much more critically examined peter dasack and the scientist said in their conflict of interest statement that they have no conflict of interest when they wrote this letter but he says everybody missed the fact that peter dasack actually runs a group uh, he is the president of eco health alliance in new york city who funded this corona virus research at wuhan institute of virology so if if he had accepted or if research had gone on that it probably escaped from this lab then his own liability and responsibility will be humongous and would be criminal so it suited him to draft this letter to organize to orchestrate this protest and to have it published as soon as possible in the La lancet to finish all discussion on this that's why we said we'll come back to the name peter dasack so that is where nicholas wade begins so two theories one that it jumped naturally zoonotically but then nicholas wade goes on to explain that in that case which was the intermediate animal you might say it came from a bat this exact virus you have not found in any bat right so suppose it went from a bat to an intermediate animal in the past the two big coronavirus outbreaks <coughs> that is sars 1 and mers the intermediate vectors were found very quickly for sars 1 within 4 months we knew that it had jumped from bats from a particular bat to civets civets are called cats but they are not cats they are wild animals they are also eaten in china in many other parts of the world so it jumped from bats to civets and from civets it came to human beings within 4 months of this first sars outbreak we knew this after mers outbreak it took some more time but within 9 months we knew that of course coronavirus came from a bat as they usually always do but from the bat it went to a camel mers as you know is middle eastern respiratory syndrome so middle east camel so it went to a camel from camel came to the human being so he said what the hell is this if this virus is also a zoonotic transmission how come after 15 months when science is much better than it was when sars 1 broke out or when 
merge broke out, we still can't find out who the intermediate animal is. And the fact that we have not found an intermediate host yet suggests to us that this virus was created in a lab. It did not come from the wet market. The other evidence he gives of this not having come from the Wuhan wet market is that now cases have been identified in Wuhan that precede the cases out of the wet market and away from the wet market which have no connection with the wet market so the virus was already there don't blame the wet market don't blame an intermediate animal at least don't blame an intermediate animal when you haven't found one and if you haven't found one in 15 months after all this research that means probably it's not there it doesn't exist so why are you ruling out that possibility so he says, then you go to the idea, that second idea, that it came out of the Wuhan Institute of Virology. In which case, it has, it further leads to two possibilities. One possibility is that it was an accident, it was bad security at the lab. The second is that it was some biological warfare, some weapon being designed that escaped and terrible things happened. And that is where he said, these two statements that were issued by these scientists should have been more critically examined and I've told you about one of them already, the, the statement made by the group led by Peter Daszak. Now, he says that Peter Daszak and others, when asked, why were you funding this kind of research, which was taking pangas with an already deadly virus? They said, no, we were trying to get ahead of the nature. Uh, and this might have had a spill, a spillover, that is what other scientists say, but they don't rule out the possibility that this was a virus that was designed in the lab. Now, to accept viral escape from a biosafety lab 4, that is the highest level of biosafety, will shake up, these are words that Nicholas Wade uses, the very scientific edif edifice of of virology and all virology, vir virologists. So once this letter came out, this statement, no other virologist or expert was willing to challenge it because this was the global virology establishment. They had put their prestige on the line saying this was not a lab-made virus, this is a natural virus. Uske baat kiske himmat hai? Uske baat mein anybody who protests can get their grants blocked, can get their thesis stopped. Everybody has to appear for Viva, everybody needs peer reviews, everybody needs paper needs papers published. That is what, what he is saying and I am buying into it and that's what now a lot of other people are all, all, all buying into. I shared with you Zeynep Tufekci's tweets. Then he says on 17th March 2020, it was as if it was all orchestrated so this world of science and the world of global politics and strategic thinking and epidemiology and virology does not go in the direction of an artificially man-made, human-made virus. In this case, it was woman in charge of the research product, so uh, research project, so let me definitely not say man-made, that this virus escaped. It was as if the Chinese or anybody else had got together to crush any such thought. So 17th March of 2020, a letter was published in Nature, again a very reputed international journal written by five top virologists of the world, uh, led by Professor Christian Anderson of Scripps Research Institute. So that's the other key name in today's presentation. And that, that paper said this is not a lab construct or a purposefully manipulated virus. Now, how could they say it so emphatically? And he says that science means everything should be seen, seen with skepticism. Everything should, must have evidence. The way Peter Daszak and Christian Anderson came up with completely definitive findings betrayed bad science. And it showed them up to be bad scientists. Maybe they were in a hurry to hide their tracks. Uh, and if so, then what was the reason? Then he explains to us, how is it that we modify, modify viruses in the labs? So the old method was that you cut paste viruses. So he said that these, these scientists who said this is not a lab made virus, they basically said that we have seen, we have cut and pasted this virus and we found, we found nothing artificial there. So these cuts and cast, this cut and paste exercise tells us that this is a natural virus, nobody has meddled with it in a lab because there are no scars. But he says that this is outdated, 
because now for many years virologists use another method called no cm no cm um aap usse dekhoge nahi so in that method you can either put the virus through serial passage through many cultures from one culture to the other the virus grows and as it goes grows from one culture to the other it changes many things that is one way of changing the nature of a virus and you can also figure out how can you do it how what kind of changes do you want and there are other methods also uh, that you can use now to uh, to change these viruses and which is what was probably done so he said this anderson group said it is improbable that sars cov2 emerged through lab manipulation of a related coronavirus he said how can they say this with certainty so he says let me try and lift the lift the technical veil i mean i'm using the word technical veils so this is like in law we say lift the corporate veil he is lifting the veil of technical jargon to explain to us how viruses are now manipulated in labs so one is the spike fit changes now this these scientists who said this is not an artificially created virus they said the spikes that it has are not perfect fits so if a scientist had created the virus the scientist would have gone by law of physics and created new spikes which would fit the other where it needs to go the socket or the human cell perfectly it doesn't it has many flaws which means it is not a human made or lab made virus he goes on to say that this is wrong he says this can be done by splicing and uh, splicing in spike proteins or taking spike proteins from other viruses and planting these here no scientist makes a physics calculation to get a perfect fit uh, also if it's a natural manipulation that means if nature has done something then imperfection in imperf imperfections will be a lot more in this case this does, does not seem to have happened the second thing that the scientists who first doubted the lab virus escape theory they said the dna backbone of this virus is not unlisted which means in simpler terms what it means is that dna from which this virus is drawn is not a stranger to us so again wade explains that rna viruses can be manipulated into dna because rna is very unstable and very difficult to study so scientists often convert rna into dna through manipulation and then they can manipulate them in the dna form and convert them back into rna right so it is not so complicated the basic test the gold standard test that we get done for coronavirus for covid-19 uh, getting samples taken from our nose nasal passages and our throats rt pcr reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction so reverse transcriptase means that this is an rna virus this process reverses it by using transcriptase or enzyme reverses it into a dna and that dna is then put through a cycle so it reaches a certain level of concentration this is simple language layman's language so you get to know whether you have the virus or not so converting rna into dna for viruses is an easy thing and he said that the scientists could have done so you may not find a dna backbone in fact a dna backbone a new dna backbone is easy to make and it's very easy to make that in a dna backbone which is unlisted and which has not been examined so he said that these, these theories have absurdly large holes then who 9 months later 9 months later who sent out uh, its own research team into china and they came back and they came back and they also issued a statement but that statement said that doesn't look like it escaped from a lab but it wasn't as emphatic as the chinese may have wanted it to be that did not happen the next thing he says is that don't i mean my language not his that don't bullshit people who know science because in science we know that not now but 20 years back scientists had been working on the uh, 1918 flu virus they were working also on polio for uh, the dna of the polio virus and smallpox gene and they were replicating and creating other kinds of viruses so viral manipulation in labs 
is not something that is unheard of. It's not something that the Chinese may have invented. The important thing is this project that was going on in China, which they justified by way of gain of function. Kya mek panga le rahe coronavirus se SARS-1 wale to see if we can get ahead of nature to create a super virus. So the nature tomorrow hits us with the virus worse than SARS-1. So they were cutting their lanes and getting ahead of traffic. That's what they say. In the process, they created probably a monster that is out of their control. So he goes, he gives us a beautiful example. He says, if you think that such viruses can have not been coronaviruses that have not been produced, I will tell you the research done by a Dutch university more than a decade ago, something that the mice of the world, chuhe, the mice of the world should be eternally grateful to viral vi virus scientists for. What they did was they took out a coronavirus from the mouse, chuya, and modified it by planting spike proteins from a cat. So they took out, think, they took out the coronavirus from a mouse, took out spike proteins from the coronaviruses in a cat, planted those cat ka spike proteins on mouse ka coronavirus and then modified it into a virus which only kills cats. That's the reason he said the mice of the world have to be eternally grateful to the virologists of the Netherlands. I mean, this is really like saying Bhago Tom Jerry aata hai, right? Because Jerry is carrying this virus made from its own viruses which only kills Tom, not Jerry. So he said when all that has been done in the past, then what are we talking about? Xi Zhengli, the Chinese coronavirus scientist, also called Bat Lady, she came and she gave everybody presentations and she said, I've done nothing wrong. She also got support from Ralph Barrick, a scientist from North Carolina University, an eminent scientist in area of viruses. Then he said, in 2015, a novel coronavirus was created by using SARS-1, the first SARS-1 as, uh, as the backbone and replacing its spike with another coronavirus called SHCO14. And this was then modified in such a way that this could infect human coronavirus. It's so in the labs, such coronaviruses have been created. These are called Chimera coronavirus. Chimera is like Krishna, as we say in Hindi. When something looks like something, something looks like light, something looks like water, but it's actually light. Aapko pata hai na? So it's Chimera virus because it's made from two strains. So this was made even in 2015. And he said, if it escaped, then we don't know what the trajectory will be. So kaha se aya tha wo? Abhi mein pata nahi hai. Kaha gaya usse dhundo? We will not know until it starts manifesting itself in mass sickness as this coronavirus has done. So he then goes on to say that what was being done in this lab was that they had this SARS-1 virus and they were working on the SARS-1 virus and they were taking genetic material from elsewhere to modify its spikes. Modify its spikes in such a way that they were then infecting human ACE2 cells in vitro, which is in a, in a, in a, in a, in a lab, in a, in a dish, and in vivo, which is in a laboratory animal. So they were using cells they were using humanized mice. So mice in which human kind of ACE2 cells or receptors had been created. So these viruses were infecting those mice and these were viruses modified from SARS-1. So how can you rule out the possibility that these are the viruses that leaked out and he said they would not they would be very afraid of letting this be discussed because this project was funded by none else than National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases of National Institute of Health in America. NIAID is exactly the institute headed by Dr. Fauci. So this gets very, very complicated and murky as we go on. So he says that Xi Zhengli set out to create a novel coronaviruses with the highest possible infectivity of humans, not using humans for trials, but using mice cells and humanoid mice to see whether these new coronaviruses would infect the humanoid mice's respiratory linings or not and this work 
so he said it's it is very clear that that wuhan that wuhan institute of virology it was systematically constructing novel chimera corona viruses and was assessing the ability to infect human cells and human ace to expressing mice so once you have this cell the viruses then they just had to escape to play havoc with the whole world and this is a quote that he has from an expert at Rutgers University Richard E Bright he is the head of biosafety or a biosafety expert at Rutgers University so he says that he says that in december 9 2019 an interview was given by peter dazak now this is before the outbreak of covid 19 an interview was given just a week before the first cases or two weeks before the first cases came up by peter dasack so he didn't know that his interview will be quoted against him and someone like nicolas a wade would find it who said that his lab had created nearly 100 diverse corona viruses which were not susceptible to monoclonal antibodies used to treat SARS, treat sars 1 or to vaccines so when he was asked why are you doing it he said i am doing it because of gain of action because we might learn something that will be useful going ahead in the future now again he goes back to say he explains how this might have happened so he says that corona virus this corona virus spike is unique in the sense that it has a joint the spike the, the the spike has two proteins s1 and s2 so if you think of a missile say an air to air missile the missile has a sensor which tracks the enemy aircraft behind the sensor is the war load is the bomb or the explosive that brings down or that destroys the other aircraft so this virus also has a two part protein s1 and s2 s1 is a head s1 identifies the human cell to infect because it knows which cells that is uh, with ace2 receptors those are the ones to infect and as it goes in just as with an air to air missile the sensor would go off and then the explosive would take on in this case this spike also breaks at a particular joint and that joint is the key thing it's called furin cleavage site f u r i n interesting thing is the cell the, sorry the, the virus itself does not carry the mechanism the virus travels light virus does not carry the mechanism to break itself sharply into from that cleavage site it is the human cell that produces a bunch of amino acids i will not get into the minutia it's called prra uh, and that then breaks it at that level he says now this s1 s2 business is not found elsewhere from where did it come so he says in 1992 uh, a deadlier virus had been created by manipulating the s1 s2 function and a furin cleavage kind of situation and then he goes on to quote a man called david baltimore with him with with which i think i should rest that's my case david baltimore is a 1975 nobel laureate in biology from caltech the doyen of physiology biology in the world he said david baltimore is quoted and i will tell you also why i'm smiling when i say david baltimore because i am also showing off david baltimore says when i first saw the furin cleavage site in the viral sequence with its arginine codons codon is like a code arginine is the a in prra its furin cleavage site in the viral sequence with its arginine codons i said to my wife it was the smoking gun for the for the origin of the virus which which means the virus was lab made and now he is not somebody who is just talking about about this lightly and then then he goes on to say these features make a powerful challenge to the idea of a natural origin of sars covid 2 so now this bunch of scientists who written are all raising these questions and the reason i was smiling when i mentioned david baltimore is because in 2008 i had featured him on walk the talk it come on a visit to india please see i will share that link with you and this picture and i had asked him that last century was a century of technology of it do you think 21st century will be the century of biology and he said absolutely so so please watch that also that's the reason i said i'll be showing off a little bit as well